Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and I'm here today with the uh, Tugo PC uh, convertible tablet from CTL. This is the uh, NL2. And like other Tugo PC models, it's designed primarily for educational purposes, and you can see it sort of has a ruggedized case with some uh, thick coating around it, um, making it a little bit harder to scratch up, doesn't uh, take fingerprints the way a lot of netbooks do, and it's got a handle built into the back, uh, which is retractable. It's kind of nice. It sort of looks like part of the case, but if you need it to uh, carry like a briefcase, you can. So it's definitely got a student focus on it, but this particular model, I think, is going to be attractive to people who aren't just students because it also is a uh, touchscreen tablet style computer with a uh, swivel in the middle so you can sort of easily switch back and forth. Um, it has a couple of really nice features, including that ruggedized design that I mentioned before. Um, put the stylus back in here. Um, it's got two headphone jacks and one microphone jack, making it good for uh, collaborative projects. Uh, definitely a sort of an education-oriented thing there. Over here, it's got a uh, GPS antenna slot. It's plugged up because this model doesn't have a GPS or a 3G, but uh, future models will have those, and you can plug an antenna on there for uh, uh, extra uh, boost. We've got a VGA, uh, USB on the side, and a lock port. Over here, you'll see the camera actually rotates 270 degrees, so it can be used in a variety of different situations. You can take pictures with it, you can do video chat with it. We've got a 4-in-1 uh, flashcard reader with a sort of rubberized cover to help keep dust from getting in there. Another Ethernet or uh, USB uh, power. The only vent on the machine is on this side, and here's the Ethernet cable again with a uh, sort of rubber plug. On the tablet side of things, there's um, status LEDs, power. On this side, on this side we've got the um, camera button and a home button. I'll show you what that does in a minute. The speakers are on the base of the unit, and that makes it easy to hear whether you're in tablet mode or a P uh, laptop mode. And there are two buttons here. When you're using the Foxit PDF reader, you can actually hold the device in your hands and flip pages up and page down. There's an API available so that developers who want to uh, write other applications that use these buttons can do that as well. Um, it's a little bit large for a netbook or even for a tablet. When you compare it with something like the Lenovo IdeaPad S10 3T, the uh, CTL uh, Classmate PC version just seems monstrously large, but it's got that ruggedized case, um, it's got a nice large keyboard, and it has a much larger touchpad, which, uh, which are all nice features. Um, the Lenovo weighs about uh, 2.7 pounds, the CTL weighs about 3.1 pounds. The difference isn't huge, but it definitely it's noticeable. Um, but the number one compelling feature here is the Lenovo has a very tiny touchpad with integrated buttons. I found it very difficult to use in laptop mode for that reason. The CTL laptop has a nice large touchpad, one of the largest I've seen, with two very large left and right buttons. Um, the uh, keyboard is about 85 to 90 percent. I had no problem touch typing on it. It was able to hit around 95 words uh, a minute, which is pretty close to my top speed. Uh, let's go ahead and load it up and take a look at some of the software. Now, it does have a resist resistive touchscreen display, which means that you need to use a stylus or the back of your finger. When you first load it, you're going to see this Blue Dolphin software. This is a, uh, a quick application launcher that gives you a couple of different uh, categories. There's the quick launch, so we've got Windows Media Player, the Control Panel, the Internet Explorer, etc. Uh, you can look at the desktop to see other software that's available on the desktop. At the top, there is a uh, dock with volume, mute, uh, screen off, uh, customizable menu. If you don't want to look at these things, you can sort of make it go away. Now, um, on the side here, I mentioned that there's a home button. So if you have, say, a web browser or other application up, you hit the home button. It takes you right back to Blue Dolphin software. Hit it twice quickly, 
and it'll bring up the quick controller software which lets you calibrate the screen, adjust the brightness, the volume, um, auto rotation, or you can manually rotate the screen. Now you notice it does take a moment to adjust the screen and there's an accelerometer in here so when you have auto rotation it will automatically adjust the screen but it takes a little while for that to happen and you see if I if I sort of change the position too quickly it gets confused and doesn't rotate quite properly. So let's try that again. Okay, for some reason it's just uh, being a little bit finicky. And so that's one of the problems here that I do have with this computer is the auto rotation is not uh, quite perfect. Let's make sure I have that enabled. Uh, it is enabled. So let's give this one more try. I'm waiting for it to adjust. Well, let's manually rotate the screen right now. And here's my second big problem. Um, the screen is 124 by, or uh, 1024 by 600 pixels, which is great in landscape mode for reading web pages, running applications. Uh, works pretty well for netbooks, and for the last couple of years, that's been the standard resolution on netbooks. But you see here, when you rotate the screen so that it's 600 by 1024 instead of vice versa, on the Blue Dolphin program launcher, suddenly we only have room for one row um, of applications. You get more if you minimize the screen here. But, you know, you had a whole bunch of applications showing up previously, and now we just have a single row. Um, when you go to web pages, you know, here we are reading an article from the New York Times website, and make sure you can see the whole thing here, and it actually cuts off the right side of the column. If you go to, uh, here we are in, um, at the New York Times homepage, you can't even see the full title of the New York Times. So you know, 600 uh, p pixels this way is just not really ideal for uh, surfing the web or running certain applications that are really meant for larger screens. Um, I think that there are ways around this. Uh, the iPad, for example, first of all, has uh, 1024 by 768 screen, um, so it doesn't run into this problem as frequently. Um, but the uh, Safari web browser that's available for the iPhone, uh, the Google Android browser, a lot of other mobile web browsers automatically dynamically resize pages to fit on the screen. That's something that Internet Explorer, Firefox, uh, even Google Chrome don't do out of the box. Uh, there might be extensions that help add that functionality, or of course you can set the default zoom level, but uh, web pages uh, just out of the box are going to require you to spend a little bit more time scrolling than you might like. Um, this particular model does ship with Windows 7 uh, Professional, which means that it has some touchscreen features which are nice. So for example, you can navigate through pages by using the scroll bars, which is not the most uh, not the easiest thing to do. Um, or when you're using Internet Explorer, you're also able to perform flicks on the screen, but as you can see, they're a little bit unpredictable. There we go. Um, and they're hard to control. It's sort of it's sort of like using the page up, page down. Um, but if I just want to scroll a tiny bit the way that I would on, uh, say, an iPad, it doesn't work. So this is definitely better than the, uh, the options that are available when you're using Windows 7 Starter Edition. Um, out of the box, it does include support for flicks, but it's not great support. There's a, a, a couple of extensions for web browsers that give you more precise control, and you might want to look into those if you did uh, get this with either Windows 7 Starter or even Windows 7 Professional uh, that includes touchscreen features. Now, one of the other nice things about Windows 7 Professional, though, is that when you tap on any text box, you get an icon that asks uh, if you want to bring up the on-screen keyboard, which is a little bit tricky sometimes, but um, when you're using Windows 7 Starter as the review unit of Lenovo S10 3T that I have ha uh, comes with, you don't even have that option, so you have to manually bring up the uh, keyboard, and your best bet is really to do that before you switch to tablet mode, because otherwise it's almost impossible to do. Um, but you've got an on-screen keyboard. It's a little bit tricky to use. It's not really meant for thumb use, especially because um, it won't recognize fingertip input. 
Um, but if you just want to enter a URL or something, this is definitely good enough. If you wanted to write an email, I wouldn't really recommend using that on a screen keyboard. Um, there are some applications on here for things like handwriting recognition. The resistive touchscreen uh, is adequate for handwriting. It's not as good as uh, something with, say, an active digitizer um, because it uh, doesn't recognize different uh, levels of brush strokes. Let's just quick load up uh, the paint application here because I happen to have it. So, for example, the H didn't come up very well, but you can place your hand on the screen and still write because it doesn't recognize your palm input. So, so that's a pretty nice feature that's not available on every um, convertible laptop these days. So there you go. That's a first look at the CTL uh, 2Go Classmate PC and L2 convertible tablet. It's a long title, but it's a pretty nifty machine. Um, it's probably one of the best Intel Atom based convertible uh, tablets that I've tried so far. But that's not really saying that much. I mean, the, the small screen resolution, the fact that the auto-rotate on the screen doesn't work very well, there's still some kinks to be worked out. Uh, CTL does plan to offer this with a higher resolution 1366 by 768 pixel display. That might help a little bit. Um, but really, I think it might take a better accelerometer, accelerometer support. It might take a faster processor in order to get the full advantage of the touchscreen features that are built into Windows 7. Um, you don't need a super fast processor to make a tablet. Apple has proven that. Their ARM-based processor is really not uh, as powerful even as the, uh, the Atom processor in here. It's a much simpler type of processor. But the uh, iPad feels quicker and more responsive because the software is really designed for it. Windows 7 does have some really nice touchscreen features built into it. I just think that you might need a faster processor to handle them because it's a much more robust operating system overall. Um, so, you know, if you're in the market for, for a low-cost 10-inch tablet right now, there aren't a lot out there that are going to be any better than this one. Um, the question is, is that good enough for you? Um, the pricing, this one goes for about $4.99 for the base model. And uh, that's the version that ships with Windows 7 Starter. Uh, this particular version with Windows 7 Professional ships for uh, $5.99. Sounds like a lot of money for a netbook, but it's actually not that much more than other convertible tablet-style netbooks like the Lenovo uh, S10 3T or the Asus EPC uh, 101MT. And, um, you know, if, if you're looking for something in this range, those guys tend to cost around $500. So, there you go. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and the uh, Classmate PC uh, CTL2Go.